welcome you uh, up here. I, when I was here, I always felt never feel like that, that, uh, uh, that the balcony is a, a strange place to be. The only strange place to think about the balcony is that we'll probably give you a job while you're up here. But otherwise, it's a good place to be, and you're always welcome you just to come up and see things. For the uh, uh, young folks particularly, I'll give you some things that you can uh, uh, touch. I'll give you some things that, that you can pull and so forth. I'll show you some things I'm wearing, but be a little careful about um, what uh, you're touching. So don't touch things if I don't yeah, uh, tell you to, but otherwise you are most welcome. Um, oh my goodness, they just keep coming and coming and coming. Well, yeah, this is really neat that we have so many people here. Yes. Um, John, John, you want to maybe bring about four, four or five chairs up? All right, well, I will start with um, telling you uh, a little bit about uh, why I happen to be here. Uh, and that was that 25 years ago, so do the math, that would be 1987, um, this organ was put in, uh, the fancy word for it is installed, and uh, it was quite a project, and it didn't happen overnight. It took from about nine, the early 1980s, and uh, here's my uh, helper here on these dates, but uh, Mr. Miller is very good at things like this. Can you tell me exactly when the very beginning of the idea was, maybe? But early 80s. Early 80s. <laughs> Actually, it started, um, the idea started with, with Pastor um, England? England? No, no, no. Goodrich. Goodrich. No. Kenny? Kenny. 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 Yeah, we explored the possibilities way back then. I see. Just exactly when we started uh, studying yeah. to, to do this work. Okay. So there was a it was, it was a very long process at, at that point of deciding because it is a it's a huge expense. It's very expensive. On the other hand, we're looking at something that is is a ba relative baby as far as its life. It could go hundreds of years. It will certainly be here when. The church is very, very old, and maybe some people will be talking about, boy, the roof is starting to go, and we don't know what we're going to do. We hope that doesn't happen. It stays up, and everybody keeps it up. But this organ will be there. Yeah. I mean, it is, that's how they're built. So it was, a, it was an idea of, of, of a good stewardship. We were looking at something that would need to be replaced. Okay. What? 
when that, um, when that, whatever it was, yeah. was in the ceiling, the church was very, very dark. I see. It didn't reflect anything. Right. As well as it didn't reflect something. Okay. And immediately, well, about as well as it's all just gone. I mean, I had to leave. Patrick? Acoustically as well as. Yes. So, right, and, and by the way, I do have Bob here because he's, he's, he's the authority. Don't tell us. This is Elaine is not the authority on this stuff. But, but so I did ask uh, Bob to come up not only for that, but he knows some of the some great details about this. Well, okay, that gets us to look. the ceiling is now wood instead of uh, the spongy stuff and whatever it was. So they're a kind of soft surface. And then we had a decision of, okay, so what kind of orbit would we buy? And of course, that gets to what kind of orbits are there to buy? There are electric, there are electro-pneumatic, and there are tracker, or the other name for it's mechanical action. Okay? Electric organs yeah, can be anything from what sounds like something at the Brewer game or a roller rink <laughs> to very, very good digital song. You know, as you, you know from uh, things that, you know, devices that you have, how good digital reproduction has really become. So they are, they are very good, but when you when you have to go through those things, first of all, they can't quite do it. And second, you know, you want to see the, all the movie commercials about replacing your iPhone with five, and then <laughs> five is hardly out and six is on the way, and everything like that, that not only you say, well, we could keep ours, but when something goes wrong, you want to go back and you know, go to the iPhone three parts or whatever, they are not there. And, and the same thing on it. It isn't that bad. But they do become difficult. Uh, I would guess throughout probably 25 years out in an electric organ's life, and you're starting to live on borrowed time. Um, you know, so so they, it, it, it's a huge difference that way. So uh, that was the one decision. Electro pneumatic organs. Have, uh, are what you commonly see. If you see it, go to most churches that you see some pipes uh, in town uh, and other places. It's probably an electromagnetic organ. Uh, what you can do with that is it, it has a wind chest. It draws air to the pipes with that we'll be showing you in a few minutes. But it doesn't uh, require that the keyboard be right there because elect rec electrical circuits take that signal to the various pipe chambers or wherever the pipes are and open and shut those uh, uh, openings to the pipes to allow the pipes to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that has a lot of benefits as far as uh, being able to change sounds quickly and so forth. Uh, but again, there is something neat about these um, historic organs that were built as they were built 100 years ago. Yes. And that was what the, the decision was made. So this is the mechanical action of tracker organ. And uh, I've got a couple of visuals here. I'm just going to all see here once, guys. Um, the, I will give these out if you want them. Don't, if I, as many of you who have been here before have seen this schematic. And if you want us to kind of get an idea of what this is all about, that's sort of the pieces of it. But basically, what we need to do is get the sum from these keys. There is one part of this that is electric, by the way, and that's the blower. Yeah, the blower. <laughs>
There's something called a slider. And in past it, you have to do two things. First, you have to get to Marathon. Then you choose a stop, and I'll be showing you those things. You choose one type of pipe. And then if you open that, well, it all play. <laughs> so we can't have them all play. Because, uh, so then we have to get into the particular one. So there's two actions in there. You have to get the air up into there, and then you have to get it to that specific one. I'll show you some of that. But this is what it wants. These are the types. This is not from this orbit. I got one missing. Nor is this one. Nor is that one. Uh, we've each been given one. You know, So that, they're kind of neat, but there are, as you can see, they look pretty much like that. Behind here, there are also wooden ones, so th that's basically the two materials. They're either built of this, which is usually composite of tin and lead, uh, or they are wood. Okay? They work kind of like a flute, and so, Robert, I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> <Come here. laughs> you to tell me some differences after we do this demo. Okay, Robert, go for it. Alright, I need some differences. Some differences. High and low. High and low. Yeah. Oh, Not only you got only big and small, right? I mean this is huge. But it's also much lower in pitch, right? This sounds like a Okay, come on up and take a look at the side of this. And 
then after they're done, we'll, we'll let them stand and we'll get some more folks on. What they're seeing here, as they look in here, and if you have that schematic, you see the reservoir where the blower is actually forcing the air in. And you see those things that look like bricks on there? Well, that's what they are. <laughs> they're, they're basically a way to, to keep that pressure on it. And then from there, it's going up. You see all those, these are the valves that look open the individual ones. All of these little valves are called trackers. The trackers are, are actually very, very fine little pieces of wood uh, that are just amazing when you think of uh, all the the places this has to go and, and, and to put this together and everything and have that all go perfectly. It, it's the most incredible uh, example of simplicity and complexity at the same time that I've ever seen. Okay, how about if we get that front row? Just take one thing if you can. So this is the bottom of those pipes that, that some of you were blowing on.
Yeah, okay, four per year. Okay, but it, it's a long process. But this didn't start with just like, oh, I'll go to the lumber yard and get some lumber. We got a picture that we, we can't find, by the way, of the tree drying. Oh, this casework to keep, you know how wood warps and all that, you have a and you know how one horn goes up and the other one doesn't and all that. In crafting something like this, he selected the tree, you could see it mill, and you could see the rings just right there. It was all the same tree. And that tree had to dry and so forth, and then be used to craft the cabinet. Uh, so this came over in a container ship, and John, anything you... This is just one tree, right? The, the basics of the cabinet are, I believe, the, the stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. The, the, the um, right. I, I don't know every, everything of it. Well, the pictures I put in the program were from yeah. the building. Uh -huh. Those that we found. You know. Okay. <clears throat> but there was none of a single tree. Yeah. There was one of I didn't use. Of a pile of lumber, equivalent to what it would have yeah. taken, I'm sure, because right. it was like yeah. like a pallet more yeah. or more, you know. Right. And, 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 and was sitting outside his shop waiting yeah. to be, and it said, for Oregon, for, what would it be in German? Yeah. For Oregon, yeah. found the like Wisconsin yeah. on it. And, and as I said, on one of them, the, the close, you could see the rings, you know, as it had been milled, you know, the way it was laying there, you know, then you'd say, oh, that was, that was the mill thing. So oh, oh, it was built over there, it was put together, it was played so that they knew it was right, and then it came over, it was taken all apart, <laughs> taken over here and uh, by a container ship, so it came over by ship, then it was put on a semi, the back, you know, one of those big back parts of the semi, and in it came to Fond du Lac. <laughs> and Bob, you want to give a couple details on that beginning part and, uh, that you know? The picture that always comes to my mind was the unload of the case, the bottom part of the. Yeah, this was a yeah. wonderful big old thing. <coughs> <coughs> and a half a dozen guys, and John was on one of them, <coughs> took that case and carried it all around the building, <coughs> then, then through the, up the steps in the front, through the front door, and then it had to be hoisted up over the railing into this position. Yes. And it was so funny that it looked like a like a big open center. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in the front page of the father of the quarter that year too. Well and when I came in after work, what I saw was I I think there were more than six. It looked like a herd of guys, ten guys hauling like mad on this giant roll close up here with the block and tackle over that beam, swinging this piece, this yeah. great big piece, into place. This was all one thing. And it was like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Several of us were praying down here. John, you remember anything more about that crazy? It was, it was quite incredible. So that was getting to that big thing. Well, you know, the, a hook had to be installed in the ceiling to do that. Yeah. And my picture is close on a ladder that extended from the floor up to one of the beams. Uh, fixing a hook up there to hang, hang the pulley on so that they could. And how oh, would all these? Like that ladder and, well, and trust, trusting the hook. No, no, no. We were no. actually scared. That's what would worry no, me. No. But, no. The all whole these, ceiling was starting to come down. All these little <laughs> scarred pieces came off the, the crate too, and they would unpack those things. And you, you kind of really didn't want to touch them. <laughs> you didn't want to take them anywhere because what if you stumbled? <laughs> you know, I mean, just hauling all that delicate cargo and, and the things like that, it was just, you just knew the impact of, of what you had in your hands. Yeah, very well. So in went the casework, and so then we had all of this wood and this wood and the pipes. So then comes then comes the long part of installing all of those pipes and uh, uh, and what we call voicing it. When when uh, we 
did that search process, we had, had a man uh, from Ripon College, whose name was Dr. Spees, uh, helping us. And he pointed out a number of, of good builders. Uh, Bob's pipe comes from one of the builders who has built some organs around here. And uh, uh, Dr. Spee's new uh, Klaus, and there was a, a, a Becker organ in Ripon. Yes, and that, that little organ is, is in a private home. It's, it's, not, it's gone. There was a cute little church, the uh, Christian Science Church in Ripon, right down by uh, Silver Creek. It looked just a lovely little church like, where you looked through the window and saw the creek and the, uh, everything, but there was a small Becker organ in there. So Donald knew him. And uh, so we went to see several others, and I think, you know, there were a lot of factors in it. But if, you know, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, he just was able to marry the instrument to the building. I mean, it, to me, there was no question that in voicing it, that's why it sounds so neat. We went to somewhere where it was a really neat organ, but, you know, maybe it sounded too big for the room or too small for the room or whatever. But these are just good things. You know, I mean, it was just the best thing, you know. So that's the work that he and his assistant was a um, younger man named Raymond Steiss uh, did over six weeks here as they installed it and had it fit this room, you know, fit, fit the sound of it, not that the, the instrument would look the same. So, okay, well, so that's the, that's the story of it getting in, and so then someone does it, so I'm like, so let's do a little bit of demonstration here on that. Okay, again, remember there's nothing mechanical on this, so we have to pull all this stuff. When I do something like this, that's moving that stuff to open that particular pipe um, and set of pipes. So you have all these different names in German, um, but you get used to it. I couldn't say them all, nor could I translate them all, but I knew what they are. So we start with the basic sound of the organ, and that's why it's called the principles. And that's this sound. Well, remember, his was so much, what, I don't, height, right, not just, not just smaller, but higher. Now this is the same type sound, but listen to this, guys. So that is the same type of sound, right, but it's higher, okay? So, then, if we put them together, it's like two people singing together, but singing the same part. Well, when you see a, when a, a string vibrates, 
you know, you kind of think, well, it might be due to this whole big wave, but of course it's got little subwaves in it all the way. And on in music or in any kind of a thing, those are called harmonics. So we get not only the octaves, but we get these other sounds. Some of them, it divides that sound or that, and that vi thing that's vibrating into thirds or fifths, and those give a different tone. So when you add that to it, here was our basic sound. Okay, now we added those high ones before. This one, we're using something that is giving it
<laughs> is that every time you add a stop, you feel a little more weight in, the, in that term. Now, in a well-known organ like this, it, it really is not anywhere near as bad as I imagined in my nightmares <laughs> while I waited, <laughs> I waited it to come in. Um, but uh, you can imagine that if you keep adding that, those extra things, even that little bit, it gets harder and harder to play. In poorly designed ones, and some people got some funky ideas about like putting the, the keyboard way away and making long, long trackers that went to the keyboard. They were just horrendous to play. So this one is just sort of a dream. But you will find if, if you hear people coming in and say, oh, I don't know, I don't think I can play a tracker. Is there an organist? It's usually because they've got this idea, that, which is fun to do, but it gets heavier every time you put some more stops on. So, We've gotten through that, and I'll just play something with lots of the flutes and principles, and then I'll add those mixtures on here for a minute. Grab the last one, okay? So this is kind of that song that you would get that way, and I'll add, add the mixtures on. Guy here, 
It's called a Chrome Horn. <laughs> Isn't that a great name, Chrome Horn? Okay. Um, he, should, he should mimic a little bit, like, I guess as close as I could say, it was maybe a clarinet. Yeah, here's him. <laughs> Our two reeds, except our pedal one. This is always the favorite one. This is the one I always say, if 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 you don't, but if you have bats, this would be the one we evict the bats on. <laughs> summer gets so hot and this these are tin and lead pipes that uh, that can do some things to it. And you all know what wood what happens to wood in winter, you know, when it when it shrinks up and then in summer when it uh, swells up and so forth. So so yeah, it is susceptible to that, but again they've been they've been uh, kept in uh, uh, unheated cathedrals in Europe for hundreds of years and they make it. So so it, it, it stands up here. In a reeded instrument, you have to wet the reeds before yes. you play the instrument. Yeah. Are these wooden reeds? Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're a little, little metal thing. Okay. So there's, there's not uh, right. that where it has to happen. Anything else? Yes, sir? Do you, ever, do you always use it? Uh, do I always use it? I am always thrilled when I get to use it. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to use it. And I don't always, but I do every time I do. I, I consider it a blessing. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> this is are, there, are there a lot of these in Wisconsin, or what makes this? The unique? trackers, trackers, kind of had a revitalization in that the uh, uh, 70s and 80s, um, and so they they're not that common. There aren't that many builders. Uh, the men who kind of had that passion for it. I frankly find it hard to make a living with it. Um, so a number of the Wisconsin builders are not doing it any, anymore. Um, so I guess that's the basic answer. I don't know. Anybody else got an idea? Yes. Ripon, Ripon College has a tracker by Gene Mediant. Oh, good. <laughs> Mr. Mahoney on the Google. With your smartphone. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I googled Klaus. Yeah. And Klaus, it's uh, Klaus uh, started the business in 1955, and his son Michael, who was um, learned the trade from him, is still producing tracker organs in Germany. And the the website is Becker B E C K E R hyphen O R G E L B A U. But if you just Google Klaus Becker, you should be able to find the website, and it shows more of the contemporary trackers that they've done, he's done recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would think it would be interesting with all the publicity we're doing mm -hmm. to forward this on to Michael, yeah. since he probably was involved in building this in his father's shop yes. at the time and might even remember it. Because he shows on the website, they show works or projects that they've done. So he may, he may get a big kick out of the fact yes. that we're doing this oh, yeah. with our oh. organization. So. Okay, uh, you might have yeah, seen this retro. I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, we did make shirts when we celebrated this thing going in, and we did send shirts okay. to their whole, yeah, sure. the whole bunch of them, and we did have a picture of all the guys in the whole thing over in Germany and all wearing their their Oshkosh T-shirts. <laughs> Judy has one yet. Show me. Don't you oh, I have a bit. I have to wear something over it because it has holes. 
<laughs> All right. Have you mentioned pay too? Uh, no, I have not. I'll let Mary. We did. Uh, some of you may be aware it's not on Wisconsin Public Radio anymore, but it was for many years, and it's still on NPR. It comes out of Minnesota. A weekly program called Pipe Dreams. Mm -hmm. I'm Michael. I have uh, too many things in my head. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, he, anyway, they every week it's an hour, hour and a half program, and they play. They they feature organs from all over the country, probably the world, but primarily the United States. Different recitals, different organs, mostly uh, classic organs. Once in a while, they do a whole program on theater organs. Um, anyway, we got a hold of him when we were planning this recital with David Heller. We are recording today, and he is going to. He, we are going to submit the tape to him or the, the CD, and he very likely will use some of it on pipe dreams, which will go to national radio. Um, he had worked with uh, David Heller before, not just too long ago, at a recital at Plaza. So at first it was funny when I emailed him and he misunderstood. He just like, oh well, they have got this organ from. He thought we just like, what we bought it somewhere and you know and whatever. And then when I explained what back, I said no, no, no. You know, well for one thing I put the wrong date in. Like it made it sound like we'd had it for five years. So that was. <laughs> but anyway, then when he understood that the whole story, he was very interested. Yeah, especially with David Miller's name attached. So. Problem is, unless you want to drive up to Minnesota, you won't be able to hear it because right now, you know, Wisconsin Public Radio right. doesn't hear it. It, so. it is not, although, again, if we get any information and you can listen online or something. Yeah, there, sure. there will there be some way we It'll can be find out. It would be wonderful. All right, um, I will take more questions.